Tonight we're continuing in the fourth chapter of Ephesians. We'll be in verses 15 through 16. As we consider growing up and being compacted together. Now, as you know, the body of Christ is a unique unit. I suppose you could call it a social unit, but it's it's not a really an adequate description of it. It's a single entity, but it's comprised of many members. And you can't consider the whole without regard to the individuals. And you can't consider the individuals without regard to the whole. Amen. Now, it's having said that, you'll be tempted to do the, precisely what I just said you shouldn't do. Mm -hmm. There'll be a temptation to focus on individuals as though there were no body, mm -hmm. and look at the body as though there were no individuals. <laughs> that, of course, is one of Satan's snares. Now, this is unlike anything in the world. There's nothing in the world really like this. The uh, head or president of an earthly institution can neglect the individual members. In fact, they normally do. Very few in a, in a corporation of any size, very few people ever see the head of it. I worked for a sizable organization. It was several years before I ever got a glimpse of the chief, chief, of, chief of staff. I would, it just isn't what the world does. It deals with the whole, not with the members. You see, this isn't the way the head is. Amen. The head deals with the whole and the members individually also. <laughs> now, in this body of believers, and normally when it's mentioned, with very few exceptions, it's a local body. Growth is expected in this group. We're not talking at this point about individual growth, although that is expected. We're, not, we're talking about collective. That's what we're going to be talking about tonight. Not individual growth, although that is involved, we understand. We're focusing on collective growth, which you hardly ever hear any hint of anything like this in the Christian world. Actually, a person should be able to figure it out. All the epistles are written to groups, except it said some were written to individuals, but they were key individuals. And when Jesus addressed a body of people, it was churches. So we should be able to figure it out that God expects something out of a congregation. But I really don't think many congregations know this. I sure know it isn't preached much. But it is a very uh, key matter. Now the means of growth in this body are unique. Here there are words. <laughs> Well, words got us into this mess, and now words got to get us out. Yeah, the human race was subverted by words. Amen. This can be brought together by words. That's how God's going to work this thing. Not by songs, by words. Songs will be involved, but it goes a whole lot deeper than that. Now, Another thing to note is that various ministries, <coughs> there to the to the various ministries focus on the body on the on the inner man. That's their focus. You cannot, you can't neglect the outward needs of the body. We understand this. You can't say be warmed and filled. See you tomorrow. You know you, you can't do that. But the inner man is not strengthened by ministering to the outer man. Amen. That you've got to remember. Yeah. So when there's need to minister to the outer man, the poor saints in Jerusalem, you have to do this, but you can't let it drop there. Yeah. You've got to take it further than that. 
your gifts have to be accompanied with some very solid demonstration of your love and care for the people for they can be built up. In the spiritual life, the inward man is not made better when the outward man is made better. Not necessarily so. Unless it be in a sense that it would free the person from distraction on it. And that would be a different case there. Now the growth in this case involves the enhancement of character. All right, now that's a whole new area there. The world tries to do this, but they do a lousy job of it. The worst characters in the world are people who have been, who have their character has been worked with. You don't believe this? You just do some street work. Do some mission work. Work with street people. Go to people that rehabilitate drunks and you'll find out the worst people are the people that are people have tried to help them. Well, you'll see it, and I've done this, so this isn't like a hearsay with me. That's because they can't, man can't change another man's character. All you can do is commit to them that the character has to be changed, and give them the means, give them the message, but you can't do it themselves. <laughs> there has to be an increased perception. We're talking about growth now. Increased perception so that people can discern good from evil. Now, a lot, most people have a lot of trouble with this. They can't discern good and evil. That's why a lot of arguments arise over this. A lot of disagreements on what a person should do for this case and that case. They can't discern between good and evil. See, but growth involves that. Yeah. You had something, Brother Bob, you wanted to say? Oh, yeah, I did. Okay. Sure. Okay. <laughs> you want me to go ahead? Oh. Oh, yeah, they, they, they. No, I can't remember now. Okay. Sure. <laughs> <coughs> so we're addressing now that a challenge to God's people <coughs> to be a meaningful contributor to the whole body. That's what we're going to be viewing here. Verses 15 and 16 of Ephesians 4. But, but speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, According to the effectual working in the measure of every part, maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. Amen. <laughs> but, the important word, but, that's the antithesis of what's in the 14th verse that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine carried about by the slight of men, you know, so uh -huh. What's the alternative to that? But, in other words, it just, it, the point isn't just avoid being children. Yeah. That's not the point. The point is instead of being children, be this. Be a fundamental contributor so that people are better because you're there, not worse. Amen. Don't let your presence bring a handicap. Mm -hmm. yes. And it does if you're like a child tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. You'll be in Christ for some time now. You're still vacillating. You still can't figure out which TV preacher is true and which one's not. And you don't know which books to read and which books not to read. See, and you stay, you're staying in this state. This is like, this is a weight upon the body. Because this isn't what God intends for his people at all. But, <coughs> I think we do have to make some allowance for people that are deprived of normal mental capacities, there's people like this. We're not talking about those kind of people, although I've found that those people generally have a, a better perception of the things of God than some sound-minded people. 
I've noticed that over the years. All right, what's the alternative to being children tossed to and fro by the wind of doctrine? <clears throat> but speaking the truth in love. Oh, this fit text here has been watered down so much I, it, I can't just spend a lot of time on the way people approach this. They think that is talking about the way it sounds. We don't like the way that sounded. Well, you just need to grow up. Amen. Your, your skin's too thin. Yep. We're not going to pour honey on everything we say. We are not going to intentionally offend either if we can avoid it. But speaking the truth in love doesn't mean the way you say it or how it sounds. Other versions say, saying true words in love. Now here's another slant on it, doing the truth in charity. Here's another slant on it, follow the truth in love. Lovingly speak the truth. Here's a New American Bible, living the truth in love. Here's a Net Bible, practicing the truth in love. Live by the truth and in love. New Jerusalem Bible says being true in love. Lovingly follow the truth at all times, speaking truly, dealing truly, living truly. That's a living Bible. Here's Weymouth, lovingly hold to the truth. Being truthful in love, apostolic Jewish Bible. Love should always make us tell the truth, contemporary English. Lovingly express truth in all things, speaking truly, dealing truly, living truly. That's the Amplified. Well, you can see that this uh, it's obviously is kind of a challenging verse. It wasn't so challenging if you just read it yourself. It didn't, it didn't seem to cause me to have that, that many problems. But yeah. some of these translators really have some problems with it. Well, what, is, what does it mean? Does it mean speak the truth? Or does it mean that some words that do the truth? Or does it mean follow the truth? These are Bibles now that said this. I read to you from Bibles that said this. Living the truth. Practicing the truth. Holding the truth. What, which, which one is right? No wonder people don't understand the Bible. It's a miracle somebody does. It's such a passage as this. Have all kind of trouble figuring out what does he mean? Well, if you just want to like be dictionary smart, the word translated speaking the truth, which is one word, means to speak or tell the truth. <laughs> Pretty simple. To teach the truth, profess the truth, true doctrine. Don't lie when you speak. He's not talking about don't lie about how much your car costs, although you shouldn't lie about that. Mm -hmm. Properly represent God. Amen. Properly represent the gospel. Yeah. Properly represent the truth. Speak the truth to one another in love. So if you heard some gossip, I mean, you don't know whether it's true or not, speak the truth. Speak something that's not gossip. Speak what, 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 what builds up. Speak the truth. The idea is that truth is the environment in which everything is to be said and done. Yes. So you've got to be aware of the truth as it is in Christ Jesus. That's the truth we're talking about. And speak with that in mind. And speak, speak it in love. Love first to God. Love for Christ. Love for the truth itself. Love for the brethren. You're speaking the truth in love. Say it because you want to please God in saying it. Say it because you want to advantage Christ in saying it. Say it because you love the truth so much you just, you just want other people to know it. Yeah. Speaking the truth in love. In the interest of advantaging the brethren. Building them up in the most holy faith. Some of them may have come like tonight from have a hard day. Been battling with some of those Midianites and Philistines. And 
So now you want to speak the truth in love to them, so you can build them up. Our aim is not to promote ourselves or our ideas or what we think or what somebody else thinks. Speak the truth in love. Speak words so people know you love God. Speak the truth in love so they'll know you love Christ. Speak the truth in love so they know you love the truth itself. They know that. Yeah, speak the truth so they know you love them. That's why you speak to them. Speak to them and such a manner as this. See, genuine love will impact upon what you what you say, as well as how you say it. Speaking the truth in love. <coughs> it also ought to be noted that a person can't live up to what he doesn't know. So speaking the truth in love, you're trying to raise up the level of knowledge and understanding of the people speaking the truth in love so that speaking the truth in love may but speaking the truth in love you may so that leads to this next thing you may grow up into him in all things so speaking the truth in love is directly related to growing up not to correcting although sometimes that correction is involved. It's, it's not the purpose. The purpose isn't to straighten the guy out. All of that is involved. The purpose is to grow up. And sometimes that requires straightening out and a number of other things. Grow up into him in all things. Some other versions read grow up in all aspects into him. Every part of your life. Your life is like, you know, like ten, ten prongs reaching upward. Well, you just wouldn't want one prong to enter Christ, and the rest, the rest is all yours. <laughs> well, some people do try and live that way, you know. They say, I'll give this half day or one hour. I'll, get, I'll try and integrate that with Christ, but the rest is me. In all things... Grow up into Christ in all things, in every way. Grow up completely into Him so that no part of your life is lived in ignorement of Christ. Amen. Yes. Uh, just, uh, remember, before you get too far away from the speaking thing, the, um, the apostles, they said, we can't help but speak. but speak the things we've seen and yeah. heard. So this is the requirement. For anyone who's going to speak, they, yep. they have to have seen something. That's right. They have to have been with Christ, and then they, they, they won't be able to help but speak either. That's right. Amen. Now, this is the this is the aim. We don't want to miss. This is the aim of the apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Yep. They're speaking to equip the saints for the work of the ministry so they can all come to the unity of the faith, so they can all come to the unity of the knowledge of the Son of God, so they can all put away childish things and grow up into Him so they're not children anymore. Tossed to and fro by wind of doctrine. See, that, that's what this is all fulfilling that. Grow up into Him in all things. That's the we part. Not that you, we, may grow up into him in all things as a body of people. That presumes we're united. That presumes we've got one mind. That presumes we've got one purpose. Presumes we're headed to the same place. We kind of know we have the same center point, same foundation, same goal or aspiration. See, all that's assumed. In that, might grow up into him in all things, so that together we are a new man, together. That of the twain, Jew and Gentile, he may make one new man. That's a group. Or that we might, the church might be a perfect man. That was speaking about a group, yeah. <laughs> the body. <coughs> Maybe you thought about this since we talked about this. I've done a lot of thinking about this. 
about a congregation that's mature. It's a mature congregation. Have you ever like seen one? Do you remember seeing one? I'm not saying you don't. I'm just saying you do. You do have to think about it, don't you? Yeah, that's right. I've seen some honest assemblies, but they weren't a mature assemblies. I've seen some serious assemblies, but they weren't mature assemblies. They were just they were pretty much novices. That's not what Jesus is in building yeah. that kind of church. Amen. So whoever is building it is not Jesus. Yes. That's the work of somebody else. That's not the work of Jesus. It isn't. That's not the work of Jesus. That's not what he's doing. Yes. So when we see it, we got to say, well, you know, I've got I to do my part to get this thing, get the building program started here. Yes. Amen. Because this is what Jesus is doing. He's bringing the whole body mm -hmm. to grow up together in him so he can talk to them all at one time. Amen. Mature assembly would be one where these gifts are actively being employed. Oh yeah, that yeah, that then but there has to be this response. In other words, the Lord can deliver a message to the group and the whole group gets it. Yeah. Uh -huh. Amen. That's that's the objective. Yeah. I've preached at a lot of places where some people got it. But most of them didn't. That's not what Jesus is building. That this condition exists, we do not deny. We're just saying that's not something Jesus did. And we shouldn't treat it as though it were. So he's telling us what to do. We well, grow up into him in all things. Who's the head? It's who's the head? The church as a whole and as individuals have to connect with the head. Not just touch the head. Connect. A connection's got to be made. We know the value of connections. We got all kind of appliances in our house. Some of them are run by battery. But you do have to have some good batteries. But if it has a cord on it, you it's got to be connected to the power. Or the thing won't work. It's the same with God's people. If they're not connected with Christ, you can holler at them, you can kick them, you can thump them on the head. It won't do any good till there's a connection. Amen. So you speak and you work so a connection can be made. So the person can actually plug into Christ. Now when you got a whole church like this, Amen. while they're assembled together, one mind and one soul, the Holy Spirit could say, separate unto me Barnabas and Paul to the work that I'm going to give. And the whole congregation caught on what was said, set them apart and sent them out. Amen. There's an example yeah. of a mature body of people. <laughs> so let's uh, speak the truth in love. Love for God, the love for the truth, love for the people, so forth. So that the people can grow up. I mean, you've got to advance to Christ. You can't jump into Christ. <laughs> you've got to grow up into Christ. Why? Because you've got to be solid. You can shoot a quick, a quick sprig. It could shoot up. But see, that, that thing's fragile. It can't. It's not strong. You've got to grow up. You've got to be strong as you... Strength as you grow up into Christ and all things. <clears throat> now, the connection with the head is vital because, as the next verse says, from whom? So there's, there's some things that the people need down here, but it's got to come from Christ, and you've got to be connected with Him before it can come. I mean, it's simple, right? It's a simple. <laughs> But gee, a lot of people have never seen this. They haven't seen this. It doesn't make sense to them. They, even when we talk about it, they, they're confused. They're confused by it. They don't know what it means. <coughs> Christ is the center of everything. So God won't release anything from heaven unless it comes through Christ. And Christ isn't going to give it to anybody who's not connected or gr grown up into him. 
And he aims to do it to the church because that's his body. That's his means of communication. But a church that hasn't grown up into him is impotent. It shouldn't take any kind of program under its wing. It shouldn't be attempting to do anything for Christ. It should be throwing its labors into connecting with Christ. Because Jesus isn't going to send anything to them if they haven't grown up into him who is the head. This, this is how this thing works. <coughs> And I'll be perfectly honest with you, I don't think this has been made clear. And the reason it has been made clear is because people don't understand it. Because I can't see somebody knowing this and not telling it and not speaking it. This is how, this is the modus operandi of the body of Christ. This is how it works. The whole body, as the point of emphasis, the whole body. This is the doctrinal presentation of the vine and the branches. See, this is the doctrinal part of that. Jesus spoke about the vine. He didn't say a vine and branch. He didn't speak about a branch that didn't abide. But the thing that he's talking about was the, that had the life was the branches. The branches. They're connected with him. <clears throat> but if they're tossed to and fro by the wind of doctrine, they can't grow up into him while they're wobbling to and fro and in and out and up and down. This will not happen. You can't be stabilized until you're growing in this upward motion. Now the early history of the church emphasized the group. There were some key people, all right, that did rise up, Peter and Philip. and uh, Stephen. There were some key people, individuals in service, but the emphasis was on the group. Some of these phrases and acts that are mentioned, all that believes, he has the, the church. They were all filled. They had all things common. Grace was upon them all. All the church, see these were phrases mentioned in the book of Acts. They were growing up into him. The, in all things. And Paul wrote letters to churches. He wrote some to individuals. They were key individuals. Timothy, Titus, Philemon. Timothy, Titus, Philemon. And Timothy, Titus, and Philemon. And, but he, but the, the significant letters of any length were written to the churches. To a church. Right. To a group. I gather they were to read them publicly. Well, we all know that Timothy and Titus letters were written to them about the group oh, yeah. that they were leading That's right. yeah. and maturing. That's right. Yeah. Amen. So, see, there's only, huh? there's only one letter written to an individual about an individual situation. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Philemon, that's right. So, it's a wonder that this is like mist when it's so glaringly plain. When Jesus sent a message, it was to the churches. And then when he after he said it, he said it was for the for all the churches. Mm -hmm. So the fitly being joined together has to do with being matched, so to speak. So so we fit together like we fit together with Christ. Yeah. Amen. So this together now we're talking about together with Christ is here, but this is in order to this. The vertical to the horizontal. <coughs> so addressing the entire church should not be strange to us. But in our, in our day, if the whole church is addressed, it generally is because there's a problem. That generally is when it's done. And when there's a problem, it, it should be done. But that's not what we're talking about here. So now this is, this is the purpose for not being children. Instead, grow up into him in all things. That's the alternative. So you can speak the truth in love. So the whole body can be fitly like a puzzle. You know, no, no. Fitly joined together. The right parts are with each other. Mm -hmm. yeah, the truth of the matter is, and you, we've learned this by experience, mm -hmm. just not anybody fits together. Yeah, that's right. 
Some people are made, intentionally made to be together. Paul and Silas, you know, Paul and Bar, Paul and Timothy, Paul and Titus. There were churches that were like this too. They fit. The people fit together. Fit together and fit and compact. And it says joined. Fitly joined together. Some people are like try, one's a square and one's a round. Like a round hole and one's a square. You get your people try it. Try to make them fit together. <laughs> They don't fit together because somewhere along the line that the truth isn't in both parties uh -huh. as it should be. But when the truth is, when the truth has been embraced, there's a love of the truth, it's a love of the God who gave the truth, it's a love for Christ, you have to give up your life for him, then people can fit together and do so well. Fitly joined together. <laughs> Some versions say joined and knit together. Instead of fit together and compacted. Fit and held together. To be like glue. Fit and framed. Fitly framed. And knit together. Rightly formed and united together. And joined and held together. This is what makes the body of Christ a pleasant, a pleasant environment. When this happens. Fitly joined together has to do with connecting with each other. Blending with each other, not butting heads with each other. Complementing each other. Synergy is what the world calls a synergy. That when everything works together, then the then a larger work can be done. Now if you've got a wheel and you've got five lug nuts on it, if all that of them are tight, they'll work together. You have an engine that everything's working together. Now you can move that whole that whole vehicle. You can you can harness <laughs> you can harness that power for for a noble purpose when it's all fit together. Do you know why some people some churches meet infrequently? Now I, they might not tell you this, but see, I know this is the case because they don't all get along. Oh yes, that's you say. Oh, they just don't have time. That's just what I meant. They don't get along. Yeah. Uh -huh. They got different times. They got different agendas. They they don't fit together. Uh -huh. So they aren't going to do very much for God, because God doesn't work in an environment like that. He really doesn't. Well, the Corinthian church was so fractured. They couldn't even take time out to take up a collection that they had promised a year ahead of time. <laughs> that's, that's how divided they were. That's how distracted they were. You think that would be a simple thing. Take up the collection. You made the promise a year ago. Gather it up. Paul had to send somebody there to prod them and make sure, come on now, when you come together on the first day of the week, set something aside. And let's, don't, don't, let's all be get, gather the collection after I get there. What was wrong? They weren't knit together. You may use high sounding words and say we're all one in Christ, we all love the Lord, and so forth. This is just a lot of high sounding talk. You're knit together by what you know. That's why you speak the truth and you're, you're communicating the truth because that's the thing that knits you together. So to understand the reason, the less you're exposed to truth, the less apt you are to be knit together. I mean, that just, that should be a very, very understandable situation. <coughs> Compacted, that's the knitting together. It's not a loose fit. It's a, it's a tight fit and secure. Yeah, fitly, now notice what it says. They're fitly joined together and compacted by. So what makes us fit together? What makes us like be compacted so like we're glued tightly together? Takes a lot to separate. What 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 causes that? By that was every joint supplies the glues in what we say to each other. That's the glue. It knits us together and compacts us together. 
that came from the head. Remember, the head's the one who's administering this. Now, this is a parallel text to Colossians 2.19, which says pretty much the same thing. Not holding the head from whom all the body by joints and bands have been nursed and ministered and knit together increaseth with the increase of God. So there, you're holding to the head and through that line he ministers strength to the rest of the rest of the body and that's what that's what brings them together. So as Christ is ministering the different members they start they start talking. Ministry. Speaking the truth in love. And as they do, well, they become a, some more solid. Become a solid big choir because everybody's not saying the same, making the same point. Yeah. They're speaking the same truth, but they're showing another yes, facet of it, see? Yeah. Yeah. And as they do, things begin to come together, and the people are held together by what everybody supplies. The idea, the idea is that as individuals in Christ are solidly united, <coughs> Jesus makes sure they're solidly united this way. Amen. Under ideal circumstances, when the people are of one heart and one soul, they have one nature in Christ, the passing of truth to one another awakens in this ligament. Ah! He, see, he sees something about that, that truth. He or she sees something about that truth the other person didn't see. So they feed back through the connection. They yes. feed back. <laughs> well, what do you see? This happens oh, yeah. all the time with us. Yes, brother. On the speaking the truth in love, I've always thought of the in love part as love for the, the brethren. I don't think that is all that's involved in it. It's involved, but it's not all. Hey, you're right. right. Speaking the truth for the love of the truth. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's We're right. saved by the love of the truth. Mm -hmm. And so that that opens up uh, the the operation of speaking to one another a lot bigger. If I only speak out of a motivation for love for one another, then it's 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 a narrower yeah. uh, flow. Yeah. Of, of ministry mm -hmm. uh, because I what I perceive that someone might need might <coughs> might not be accurate and it's probably very yeah. very shallow but if I speak the truth because I love the truth yeah. then the Holy Spirit's able to take it from there Amen yeah. it, yeah. this is liberating right. see if you're going to assume something assume that your brethren love the truth that's right Speak as though that's true, and if they don't, they'll let you know. <laughs> For sure, let you know. But if you're going to assume something, love thinketh no ill. See, so if you're going to assume, assume they love the truth. And speak out of your love for them and your love for the truth, your love for God. And as you do, it will awaken. If, they're, if that person's connected to Christ like you are, You'll speak it, and you and you will just be rejoicing it. But Jesus will show that person something yeah. that will enhance your view. Amen. Amen. Oh, is this a great time? I'm thankful it's this way, and there's like a, no limit to mm -hmm. how far this goes. So sometimes you'll be surprised by the person who ministers to you. I think that's the only way that you can successfully mm -hmm. speak when it's out of season. Oh, that's right. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Yeah. I've had a, I've had a lot of uh, experiences of this. When during the sermon, I'll get one or two things that I've really impressed me, and yet when we start talking about yeah. it afterwards, there'll be like six or seven I different know. things. I'll think I didn't see that, but I see yes. it now. That's the ligament. I it. see it now. <laughs> and so, but it, I would if we hadn't mm -hmm. talked about it, I wouldn't yeah. have got. Amen. Yeah. Now, <laughs> let me give you a scriptural example of this type of thing actually in place. And this is the Jerusalem conference when the elders and apostles and other brethren got together to discuss the matter of circumcision because some people had went out from Jerusalem and told the Gentile churches, except you be circumcised after the manner of Moses, you cannot be saved. And they, they couldn't settle the matter at a local level. They couldn't, even at Antioch, they couldn't, 
couldn't resolve the matter satisfactorily, so they convened in Jerusalem. <coughs> when they convened there, first they discussed, it said there was much disputation, then we would call it discussion. So first they discussed the thing. Well, here this discussion is going on. And then during this discussion, Peter, he stands up. He has some first-hand knowledge because he was used of God to open the door of faith to the Gentiles. So he, he, he told what he'd, what he'd received. And, and then that provoked and Paul and Barnabas. They, they said, well, we, we've been preaching to the Gentiles too. And so they threw, they threw in. They were a couple of ligaments. They threw in what they had. And then, they, then James, he said, he comes to him. Why, well, this is that that was prophesied back then. So it all came to him. See, what was that? That was Jesus clearing this matter up, working through different people who were connected to him. And they all agreed. They all they want to go, that's it, that's it. Then we'll just send some letters to the churches. And everybody agreed. There was no dissension at all. What happened? The, the body was knit together <laughs> by that which every joint supplied. And we're talking about notables like Barnabas, Peter, Paul. I mean, <laughs> these are key people, but yet they didn't have the total answer. Yeah, that's right. But the total answer came all together. Yes, Sister Laura? Um, if, if the bodies fit and joined together, it would be fit for the master's use. Yeah. Well, that's right, yes. <laughs> yeah. You, if you immobilize the joint, <laughs> yes, right. um, ligaments and muscles on both sides of that joint will yes. just will that's shrink right. and shrivel. That's right, know? be useless. And, and that's what I see is what you're saying is uh, is all this communication and talking and, and and preaching and, and sharing and everything is is that is that elbow just working or that yeah. joint yes, just working. Uh -huh. And and then the body or you know, here and in, in, in this case would be the muscles on both sides would be growing and getting stronger. That's and, right. And, and, doing, and yeah. the joint, see, that's where where two units come together, right? That's where they come together, and that's what that's what's being yeah. exercised in the ligaments and that they they keep they keep the thing together. See. The thing emphasizing this example you use in Jerusalem. Now one man. Didn't come in there with all the answers. So That's I figured right. This thing out. The, the, the main thing to see is how it was worked out uh -huh. with well, all is, the brethren there. This is because this is not the way God works. Well, he did, except when it comes to Jesus. Now, except we have that exception. It all does come through Him. But He could He could have invested the whole thing in Paul, and He's the only one, or the whole thing in Peter. But that's not the way He worked, because His aim was to strengthen the body. So that the church knew, not just someone who had the secret and went around telling the secret, see. But when each one's connected, they can receive what the other person got from Jesus they can receive. See, because Jesus doesn't send contradicting signals. <coughs> yes. I've always had the perception that perhaps Paul saw more of it than the others. He didn't try to legislate it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, eventually he did. He we don't. It. Yeah, we don't know at this point whether he did or not. Yeah, but that's true. Eventually, he's he the did. only one that wrote about it. Yeah, mm -hmm. in several of his letters. But he knew this working. That's right. Mm -hmm. He knew this that it wasn't going to be solved by legislation. That that's a good point. It was not going to be solved by legislation. It was going to be solved by insight. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's the truth. Insight is the thing that's needed. Yes. Now, this is a confirmation that the truth is more than than what man has uh, invented. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We talk about speaking the truth in love. We're talking about something that has affected you, mm -hmm. not not just in an external way, but a, in a transforming way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That you yourself have imbibed this. You've received it. You have agreement with it, mm -hmm. and and then there are others who have also believed that truth. And then, as as we have this this concourse with one another in the truth, the truth actually works together. It's almost like he made us a piece of the puzzle. Mm -hmm. 
And then the truth is moving it around to put the picture together. Mm -hmm. So that it all fits together. That's right. But you love, you you first have, have received the love of the truth for yourself. Now that truth, it can come in whatever form God, God uh, decides to send it. He can send the truth as a rebuke, as instruction, as doctrine, you know, a, a lot of things. But, but the response is always the same. It's to love what God has said. Amen. And what He's revealed. Mm -hmm. and, and the reality of it is more perfectly seen in the body. Amen. Amen. So mm -hmm. not only is it, is it more complete because you have more of it collectively mm -hmm. gathered in one place, but it's seen in its harmony as it works mm -hmm. in the several <coughs> parts together. Amen. Now let's note how it goes from here. From whom and from Christ, the whole body fitly joined together and begged by that which every joint supplieth according to, now this is, this is the supply that's coming in, according to, that is this is the point in, in which this becomes effective. According to the effectual working, we would say effective working, some versions say proper working. So in, in the kingdom of God, effective working is proper or correct working. By the aid of every contributing link, there's a brother Levine brought up about the ligaments and so forth, and the, and the joints, see that every contributing link <laughs> <laughs> Boy, that's just, this is great to see. See, the, in other words, God didn't just connect for connection alone, yeah. but for communication. Yeah, yeah. Amen. That's why. That's why He connects. The effectual work of the proper functioning, or each part with the power adapted to its need, is working properly in all functions. So, what happens when the whole the whole body's working properly? Mm -hmm. There's a continual flow of truth and power that's passing throughout the throughout the body. Yeah. <coughs> In the measure of every part, every part is functioning. Mm -hmm. yeah. No there's no part that's just carried along by the other parts. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. It just may be a little bone, so to speak, but no, it has it's a link. Yeah. It's it's a it's a connection of some kind. And wherever there's a connection of some kind, there's ligaments that hold it together. And wherever that happens, the purpose is so that something can flow mm -hmm. through this. Effectual working in the measure of every part. That is, it, the measure of every part, we say every part, everyone has their work to do. Yeah. And, and no work is like incidental or unnecessary or... There's no work like that in the body of Christ. Yeah. Every working part, there's a... There's a time when it will become the preeminent, yes. preeminent part. Every person will have their day yes, amen. when nobody else will be able to do what they're able to do. There will come a time when if your name's Mary, you'll be ministering to Paul. You'll be helping him survive. Mm -hmm. But nobody else was. Yes. Yeah. Every time you're a prophet, there'll be a time when a the Obadiah will come and hide you in a cave. Nobody else be able to do what Obadiah did. Huh? So your time will come, see? So in the meantime, you just give what you have. Stay, stay seated in heavenly places with Christ. And the measure of every part, every part is working. Now, no part, no part can do without the other parts. Well, let's put it as the scripture says. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of thee. I, I don't, I'm an eye. An eye's in the head. I mean, think when a hand is way down here. Now, I don't have... No, there's no part that can say that. Right. And there's no part that can say, well, I'm so lowly. If I was only another part, then I'd have a part. Then I could do something. It can't say, well, because I'm not the hand, I'm not part of the body. 
So you can't pick out what you want to be. Yes, amen. Amen. <laughs> you, you've been put where God wants you. Uh -huh. See, if I could, if I could only, if I could only be a powerful preacher, then I could, then I could be something. No, this isn't the case. This is a misassessment of the case. God's the one who decides all of that. Yes, amen. Every part's got to work. Yes. So if you're sitting over here and you're all discouraged and cast down because you can't do what you think you ought to do, then you're, you're robbing the rest of us. You're not doing what you can do. Yes. And the body's not working together. And what happens when the body's working together? Effective working in the measure of every part, every part is doing what it's supposed to do, every part's connected with the head, there's the increase of the body. Yes. That's what it says. Yes. Maketh increase of the body. This is continual and thorough and proper working. Increase of the body. What kind of increase is this? Now, if you say to the average churchman, increase, that means more numbers. Almost universal. That's just what people, that's what they think. I think there's a lot of people who, if you question a little bit, they actually know better. It's just with a, they need a little reminder. But increase doesn't mean we've got more people now. There is an increase like that. They increased, the number of disciples increase daily. But that's not the increase we're talking about here. This is the increase of God. It's called in Colossians 2.19. Notice what it says there. Not holding the head from whom all the body by joints and bands having nourishment ministered knit together increaseth with the increase of God. So the increase of this text is actually spiritual growth and advancement. You remember where Paul said uh, I watered, I planted, Apollos watered, God gave the increase. Well, I didn't say, Paul didn't, wasn't saying, I preached, but nobody was converted. But then Apollos came along and he watered it, and then you were converted. No, the Corinthians were converted under Paul's ministry, not Apollos' ministry. See? The increase he's talking about is maturity. Growing up into Christ. How does that happen? It's not, it doesn't happen by a program. God's got his own program. He's already got a program. Yes, okay. It doesn't happen by a program for here's how we're going to get everybody elevated and growed up a little bit in Christ. No, it happens when every part is connected to the head and the head's administering through each part and they're connected at the horizontal level and they're administering to one another. In the increase of the body, here's how it is, what happens. And here, and then he spells out what he means. Unto the edifying of itself. Now, I'll be perfectly honest with you. You will find it very difficult to find a person that will agree with you if you say that's what that means. The edifying of itself. Come on now, we've got to be interested in others. The church just isn't a, to be interested in itself. We've got to get this thing out of these four walls. That's just a mindless chatter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think we ought to get it inside the four walls. That's yeah, what I think. Right. Edifying of itself in love. So the how's the church going to be edified? It's not going to be by a miraculous cloud of grace that hovers over the assembly and all of a sudden there they are. Yeah. That's not how it's going to happen. It's going to happen through the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers, faithfully ministering, and all of a sudden the people are drawn upward toward God through their love and belief of the truth. As they're connected with God, he begins to funnel down various things through each member as they're connected to one another. Pretty soon, as a body, they're growing up Amen. into Christ. Yes. See, a tree has deep roots down. The body of Christ has profound roots up. Yes, amen. They're growing up yes. into Christ. <laughs> Edifying of itself in love. And it is a pleasant environment mm -hmm. when this happens. Remember the early brethren, they met together frequently in the temple from house to house. And they were rejoicing, you know. And they were growing. They were edifying themselves in love. Yes, you were just speaking there, it, it kind of come afresh to me. 
that as we give care one to another according to the Word of God, that we're really caring for Christ. Mm -hmm. yeah. It really doesn't make sense to care more for the world than for the Lord. Yeah. We are the Lord's. And within the context of other believers, what Jesus said is, much, in as much as you've done it unto the least of these, yeah. my brethren, mm -hmm. you've mm -hmm. done it unto me. Mm -hmm. So there, there's that vital connection of each believer that is made manifest in an aggregate in the church. Now, you can see how the, the Father would be well pleased with this too. Yeah, amen. And this is how the world will be reached. Terrible, mm -hmm. Sister June just mentioned. Yeah. About because the ones who were rejected did some of the same works. That's right. That's right. <laughs> from one perspective. Yeah. But it did not. It wasn't. It wasn't to Christ Himself. That's it right. wasn't to God. It mm -hmm. wasn't was upward. It, was it the effective working yeah. in yeah. the major uh -huh. river part? That's right. See that this makes all sense. Christ's work, it was effective. Yeah. Right. right. The Holy Spirit comes, His work is effective. The church's work is effective. Amen. Yeah. Yes? There at the beginning you were talking about us not being tossed about by every wind and wave of doctrine. I thought about the parable that Jesus told of the man who had an evil spirit and cast out the evil spirit. And he cat or swept and garnished his house. And then the evil spirit that was cast out went and got seven other yeah. spirits that were worse than himself. And they went and plundered the man who hadn't replaced the bad thing that he took out with anything right. good. And the worse, the latter state of the man was worse than the first. Mm -hmm. You have to have something better to take a hold of if you're going to let go of what you That's have. right. You remember in Second Chronicles 16, 9, the King was told, The eyes of the Lord run to and fro upon the face of the whole earth to show himself strong in behalf of them that fear him, so to, uh, whose hearts are perfect toward him. Now, now imagine the eyes of the Lord running to and fro. He's got a work to do at a Timbuktu someplace. That's the people of Macedonia. That's the people of Macedonia. They're ripe. The harvest is ripe, ready over there. It's running to and fro upon the face of the whole earth. And, Here's a group of folk over there in Asia Minor, Paul and company. He said, we could use those people right there. We'll use those there. So he appeared he gave them that dream. Come over to Macedonia and help us. Or here they were. They, it was, it's been time now to get over into the area of Asia. And the eyes of the Lord are running to and fro to pass over Antioch of Syria. Well, we could use those people there. We could call the people there for the work. That same thing happens today. Yes. There's places in the world that are ready. Mm -hmm. But God's going to send, going to send mm -hmm. people that are working effectively. Mm -hmm. See? And it, I think we've experienced some of this, quite frankly. And it's, a, it's, it's quite a blessing. So it, the question is, it, will God use me? Is am I usable? And if you keep connected to the head and you love the brethren, you'll be usable. Amen. You'll be usable. Anyone else tonight have something like that? Brother Aaron. By that, you were compacted by whatever joint supplies. Yeah. It's <laughs> a, a point well made. And things that I've never thought of before with that, that specificity. So if we're not joined, compacted together just because of some natural affinity that we have, we're compacted because of what comes out of us. That's what good. What comes out of us is what's from the Lord. That's this good. also means that there is no such thing as a member that nothing comes out of. That's right. That's right. And also, just a general observation is, it's no wonder that Satan has always promoted self, because that's counter 
to what the Lord Amen. Is doing. You know, sometimes when, when the apostle Peter, some of them would stay at a certain house, it was a certain disciple. Took them in, remember? That was an effectual working of that part. <laughs> When Paul was refreshed on his trip, yes. Now, this this ministry has to do with with uh, what what we do, but also there's the ministry. It's a reciprocal ministry. That's right. It isn't just everybody's pouring out, pouring yeah. out, but that it's actually Receiving. being received. That's right. And um, yeah. So that. And, and that's where you have the edification. Uh, you're edified whenever you're able to express the faith mm -hmm. that, that God has worked in you. But it, for for us to be really joined together, there has to be a real reception of the things that yeah. each is doing. Okay, amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes, it's the, oh, it's the thing that flows through the body that gives it, it life is the blood of Christ. Yes, mm -hmm. that's right. <coughs> I was considering what you mentioned about the truth flowing throughout this working body and continuing to give increase. And you've mentioned this before that sometimes when we come to the meetings and we see that each meeting gets better and better, mm -hmm. we just keep making progress that way, we seem to forget that. It's not the truth that's growing. Mm -hmm. It's the unit of yes, the right. body that's it's growing. Actually it's actually occupying yeah. more of the truth. The yeah. truth is large. It's just being revealed. Amen. Yeah. 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 But we are growing mm -hmm. in our capacity yeah. to Amen. Mm -hmm. I like that phrase, occupy more of the truth. Yeah. 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 Yes, with Mike. I was thinking as you were uh, expounding this and describing these things that <clears throat> this is... Uh, the Lord preparing us to be the habitation of God. Mm -hmm. However, that's it, the scriptures seem to, to indicate to me that this isn't an end of itself. Mm -hmm. um, Psalm 122 says, Jerusalem is a city compacted mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. And in Revelation it says it's four square. Mm -hmm. Which indi indicates to me that this is the way that will continue to work in the world to yeah. come. Amen. It's not just to prepare us to, to inhabit there, but that's it's like train because that's the way things are going to operate there. You're very good. Yeah. yeah, you remember angels work like this. Remember that angel was dispatched to come to Daniel and he encountered the Prince of Persia and Michael and his angel he came and gave him some assistance. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. All right, we'll have a word of prayer. <coughs> Our Heavenly Father, we're grateful for the manner of the kingdom. We're particularly grateful that you're showing this to us. And we pray for grace to be able to communicate it so that others who long to know these things will come to see them also. In Jesus' name, amen.